Hi boys and girls, it's Miss Reynolds with Bored, Better Off Reading Every Day. Today we have a tiny one and a big one, yes. We have Disney's Dumbo, the mini book. One special day, Mr. Stalk flew down and landed on the roof of a train cat. Oh, Mrs. Jumbo! Special delivery, Mrs. Jumbo! He called, hopping from one train car to the next. From one car, Mr. Stork saw several elephant trunks waving at him. Mr. Stork hopped into the train car. Which one of you ladies is expecting a little bundle of joy, he asked. Right over there, the elephants answered, pointing to Mrs. Jumbo. Everyone cooed when the bundle fell open. Achoo! The little elephant sneezed. His ears, which had been neatly tucked behind his head, flopped open. They were enormous. The elephants shrieked with laughter. Just look at those ears, one elephant giggled. Why, with those ears, you should call him Dumbo. The elephant's teasing made Mrs. Jumbo angry. Turning her back on the others, she picked up her baby, carried him to a corner of the train cat, and lay down beside him. She didn't care if her baby's ears were big. She thought he was beautiful just the way he was. Cuddling him in her trunk, she gently rocked him to sleep. The next day, the townsfolk followed the parade to the circus ground. The circus barker called to the gathering crowd, hurry, 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 step right up and get your tickets. Inside the elephant tent, Mrs. Jumbo was quietly bathing Dumbo when a bunch of rowdy boys ran in. Look at those ears, she shouted when they saw Dumbo. Look at those ears, they shouted when they saw Dumbo, laughing and jeering. They then pulled Dumbo's ears. Mrs. Jumbo wanted to protect her baby, so she picked up a bale of straw and threw it at the boys to scare them away. Help, mad elephant, they screamed. The trainers quickly came, dragged Mrs. Jumbo away, and locked her up on her on her own with chains tied to each of her four legs. Dumbo crying for his mother thought he had no friends in the world as the other elephants turned their backs on him. But Dumbo was wrong. Someone did want to be his friend. In a corner of the tent sat a little mouse named Timothy. He had seen and heard everything. When Timothy saw how the other elephants treated Dumbo, it made him mad. Look at those look at that poor little fella, the little mouse said. Everyone's making fun of his ears. What's the matter with them? I think they're cute. Aw, uh, you aren't afraid of the little old me, are you? Timothy asked Dumbo, who was hiding. I'm Timothy Mouse, and I'm your friend. Dumbo, I have a plan to help you free your mother. At that, Dumbo forgot all about being scared. I know you're embarrassed by your ears, kid, Timothy said, but lots of people with big ears are famous. So all we gotta do is make you a big star. But first, we need to a really colossal act, and 
I'm just the fellow to think of one. Leave everything to me. The next day, Timothy had put his plan to make Dumbo a star into action. The ringmaster blew his whistle and the first elephant climbed on top of the large ball. Dumbo and Timothy watched as the pyramid rose higher and higher until it almost reached the top of the tent. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the ringmaster shouted, the world's smallest elephant will spring to the top of the pyramid. But before Dumbo could make his leap, his ears began un, uh, became untied, and he stumbled over them right onto the elephant pyramid. For a moment, the stunned crowd watched in silence as the elephant pyramid teetered and swayed. Then they ran from their ran for their lives, and the elephants began to fall. Stumbling and bellowing, the elephants tumbled down, crashing into beams, platforms, and bleachers. They smacked into walls and pulled down wires and ropes. Finally, they crashed into the center tent pole. The enormous tent began to sway and bellow. Then, with a huge groan, it collapsed. Dumbo was left sitting alone and forlorn in the middle of the ruins. The very next show, the clowns painted Dumbo's face and dressed him as a baby. They put him on a tiny platform high up in a building surrounded by crackling make-believe flames. Dumbo stood shaking with fear, while far below, clowns dressed as firemen ran around squirting hoses at each other. The baby will have to jump, a clown fireman announced. The rest of the firemen held up a thin safety net. Closing his eyes, Dumbo leaped from the building. Dumbo fell straight through the net and landed in a tub of wet plaster. The audience roared with laughter. As the clowns bowed to the cheering crowds, they paid no attention to Dumbo, who crept from the tent feeling hurt, humiliated, and miserable. After the show, the clowns celebrated in their tent. Cheer up, Dumbo, Timothy says, as he scrubbed his ears, his, as he scrubbed his friend's sad little face. I found out where they're keeping your mother. I'm going to take you to see her later tonight. A wistful smile crossed Dumbo's face. Things wouldn't seem so bad if he could just see his mother. Later that night, while most of the circus folks slept, Timothy took Dumbo to the wagon where his mother was chained. Mrs. Dumbo, somebody, someone to see you, Timothy called. Mrs. Jumbo put her trunk through the bars of the window and <clears throat> stroked Dumbo's head. She wrapped her trunk around Dumbo and rocked him lovingly. At last, it was time to leave. Tearfully, Dumbo said, oh, tearfully, Dumbo and his mother waved goodbye. As Timothy and Dumbo returned to the clown's tent, they heard the clowns talking about their act. Let's make the house taller tomorrow, shouted a clown. Dumbo felt sad. He didn't like being laughed at by so many people during the clown act. And a taller house just sounded scary. All Dumbo wanted was to be with his mother. He started to cry and felt tired. Timothy sat by his side and tried to comfort Dumbo. As Dumbo stopped crying, his eyes began to droop until finally they were shut tight. And as Dumbo fell asleep, he started to have the strangest dream. In the dream were Timothy and Dumbo. The little elephant was blowing bubbles from his trunk. Soon the bubbles looked like little elephants, elephants that danced and flew.
The next morning, Timothy tried to convince Dumbo that he could fly. He said Dumbo, Dum <coughs> he said Dumbo's ears were so big, they were like wings. He then gave his friend a bird feeder. Sorry, he then gave his friend a bird feather, saying it was a magical and would help Dumbo. The little elephant wasn't so sure, but he trusted Timothy. With the help of the magic feather, he would try to fly at his next performance. Soon it was time for Dumbo to perform again with the clowns. He stood on the platform with Timothy, perched on his trunk. The clowns had built the burning house higher and the, the ground looked very, very far away. But this time Dumbo wasn't afraid. He clutched his magic feather in his trunk and waited for his cue. Come on, jump, jump, the clowns shouted. Boy, are they in for a surprise, Timothy chuckled, and Dumbo jumped from the platform. But as they flew through the air, the wind tore the feather from Dumbo's trunk. Dumbo froze. Without his magic feather, he didn't believe he could fly. He and Timothy hurt... <clears throat> curled together towards the ground. Timothy slid to the end of Dumbo's trunk. Open your eyes and fly. Open your eyes and fly, he pleaded. The magic feather was just a gag. You can fly all by yourself. Dumbo heard Timothy's words and believed them. And what more, he believed in himself. At, la at the last second, Dumbo spread his ears, soaring up and up. Then astonished audience went wild as Dumbo zoomed after the clowns, chasing them around the ring. The crowds roared as he dived at the ringmaster. They applauded thunderously as Dumbo did loop-to-loops, rolls, and spins in the air. Dumbo was famous. All the newspapers carried pictures of him and Timothy. Most importantly, Mrs. Jumbo was let out of her cage. Because the ringmaster was so pleased with Dumbo, Dumbo thought it was great fun being a star. But what he loved best of all was being with his mother once again. The end, boys and girls, of Disney's Dumbo, the mini book. Boys and girls, I do not own the rights to any of these stories that I read to you, but I do love storytelling magic. And this magic was actually loaned to me by one of the children that I so love and adore to care for. She loaned me her Dumbo because I told her that it was one of my daughter and I's favorite, favorite story. We actually loved the story of Dumbo and his mom and in the movie where his mom rocks him in the trunk and how she always was there to protect him and how when they got together and just the beautiful story of a mother and the child. So my friend was nice enough to loan me her Dumbo and I wanted to share it with you today. I hope you liked it. It's one of my favorites. And now I would like to show you my Dumbo. Here he is, boys and girls. Is this not the cutest you have ever seen? Look at that. The cutest Dumbo I have ever seen in a long time and to have him here with me to share with you is one of my greatest joys boys and girls every now and then you get a little surprise in your life a little surprise of love and the surprise of love that I got was being able to borrow this tiny little book and this Dumbo to share with you today I cannot tell you how much it means to me to share one of my daughter's and I's favorite, favorite Disney stories with you. 
God, we would watch it nonstop, she and I. And there's always that part that just grabs at your heartstrings because of the love. And that is what I'm sending to you and your family today. Have a great day. And Miss Reynolds, better off reading every day, bored. We'll see you soon. Say goodbye, Dumbo. Bye.